Boom shakalaka, crypto market crashes over rumors of FTX being insolvent and Bitcoin's never fail strategy. Stay tuned. What's up everyone, Randall here from Crypto Love. Today's work video, we are talking about the cause for the Bitcoin and cryptocurrency market crash, as well as a lot of very interesting charts and the never fail Bitcoin strategy. Before we get into that, guys, make sure to like, subscribe, click the notification bell, come join us over on Twitter at the Crypto Love. Push that like button. And today we are more fearful. Go figure. Markets tumble, people become fearful. We are at 31 on the fear and greed index. The overall market down 5% today. Yikes. Bitcoin at 19,771, Ethereum at 1480, BNB at 327. XRP 43 cents, Dogecoin 10 cents, Cardano 38 cents, and Solana 27 dollars. And if you were waiting to buy for the last dip, it may be here. It may not be, but it may be here. If we take a look at the overall markets here, well, Bitcoin's broken all of the bullish structures that we had. It broke the inverse head and shoulders, which was bullish. Not going to happen. It broke the triple inception, double bottoms not going to happen. Right now, Bitcoin is struggling to stay around previous all-time highs of $20,000, and right now is just above the 280 weekly moving average, which historically has been very, very good support for Bitcoin. Now, the cause for this market crash is FTX token plummets as market fears possible Alameda contagion. It appears that FTX and Alameda may in fact be the same corporation. And we see FTX CEO Sam Bankman-Fried denies insolvency rumors as Binance liquidates FTT token. The head of FTX sister company Alameda Research offered to buy as much FTT as Binance wants to sell. But a lot of people are fearing right now this could be the next 3AC Celsius debacle. Should we be surprised? Perhaps not. SBF was warning us about this back in July when he said some crypto exchanges already secretly insolvent. He didn't disclose which ones. Apparently, we didn't, know, we, we didn't know that it was his own exchange that he was talking about. Now, and that's all alleged. We don't actually know that's true. But if we take a look right now, uh, it appears like the amount of cryptocurrency held on exchanges has been decreasing since the end of 2020. Hopefully, 2020 remains the peak of the amount of Bitcoin on centralized exchanges. If there's anything that the events in the unfolding of the space here should have taught us, not your keys, not your coins. Right now, people are exceptionally fearful. Small speculators are extremely bearish on the market. Their stock exposure is at the lowest level in 20 years. That's a long time. Even a small move up will cause massive FOMO. And if we see right now, people think, well, Bitcoin cryptocurrency, that's volatile. That's dangerous. As a matter of fact, scoreboard, my friends, if we take a look at Bitcoin compared with other asset classes, we see rising volatility in everything in the S&P 500, 10-year treasuries, investment grades, high yields, U.S. dollar. As a matter of fact, Bitcoin has the lowest volatility among all asset classes. Surprised? Hmm, I don't know. Now, if we take a look at this chart right here, Bitcoin's bear market appears to be ending. The biggest part of the bear market is already behind us. Congrats to those who patiently went through these rough times. Now, it may continue to go down for a little while, but... We are getting close towards the end of the bear markets. Everything has seasons. There are bull markets, there are bear markets, and eventually it will come to a close. And most likely it's going to happen in a very, very shocking manner. Like it's going to explode upwards and everybody's going to start FOMOing in at those points. When that'll happen, I don't know. But if we take a look at this, Bitcoin RSI on the monthly charts, we can see buy, low, sell, High. Right now, we are similar points to Bitcoin's history when it has been the bottom. There was a wide gap between these lines of the RSI, and we were pretty much where the price started to inflect right down there at the bottom. Well, we see the price inflection could suggest we are around the bottom right now. If we take a look at the Bitcoin market bottom indicator, every time the market bottom indicator signaled a longer red area, it was the best time to buy. So if we take a look, the longest red area in 2015, great time to buy. The longest time in 2018, great time to buy. The longest time in 2020, great time to buy. Well, look at this. We are in the longest area in 2022. And if we take a look at previous years, after that, a new bull run started with insane returns. 
In 2015, it was 12,800%. In 2018, it was 350%. In 2020, it was 1,600%. So we're at the beginning of a new bull run. When it'll start, I don't know. But the last chart here, Bitcoin's never failed strategy. I mean, for those of you who want a little bit of confidence in your investments that the floor won't tumble and everything will disappear. Well, if we take a look at this, on the 10 days time frame, each time the logarithmic MACD crossed bullish, it was less risky to be in the crypto market than being out of it. That's right, let me say that once again so you can hear that. It's less risky to be in crypto than out of it. That means if you have money on the sideline, according to this, it would be less risky to have it back in crypto than to have it on the outside, of course, not financial advice. Now, the 10 days LMACD crossing bullish once again, we can see that down here. Each time it crossed bullish previously, these were these lines where we were already started a little bit up from the bottom and at those times, it was less risky to be in than out. Now, this time could always be different, but based on history, three times already it's happened. That means four out of five, 80% 80 80 chance that it is less risky to be in than out this time. So that's all for today's video. If you did enjoy it, push that like button. I'll catch you guys later. Have a good one. Love you. Peace. If you don't think Bitcoin's going to a million dollars a coin and then $10 million a coin, you're already a loser. <laughs>